I'm joined by Mamoun Hamedan, the managing director of WeGo, which is a big online travel marketplace here in the Middle East. Mamoun, this seems like a really competitive industry. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what you offer and how do you stand out um, among the competition? Yeah, good morning, first of all, and thank you very much for, for having me. Um, yes, true. Uh, it is competitive today in the in the online travel, uh, I would say, marketplace proposition. But that wasn't the case when we came into the market uh, almost a decade ago, where uh, basically we were like pretty much the one and only uh, online travel player who offered the full marketplace uh, and search capabilities uh, in Arabic, in local currencies, fully localized product at that time. Um, the way we operate is a bit different. So we are we are a marketplace where we connect with airlines and hotels brands and online travel agencies globally. And we put their offers in front of consumers who are searching for their desired trips. Um, it's a hand of process model. Uh, plus, we also a few years ago added our own product so consumers can purchase directly from us or they can still continue and buy from one of our partners. What are some of the big trends you're seeing? Well, obviously, we're here at STEP conference. Um, let me mention that. Um, but what are some of the big trends you're seeing this year in the travel app market? What What are your clients starting to look for a bit more? So um, I think I think pre-COVID, I'd say ourselves and a couple of other players in the in the region managed to educate the market, educate the consumers from this part of the world about, um, you know, buying their travel deals online in general, uh, shifting it a bit from offline to online. Uh, we are used to a um, ratio of nearly 40% uh, of the total uh, uh, travel purchases to happen online. That was like around 2019. Um, Post-COVID, COVID was pausing everything, obviously, but post-COVID, because of the uh, more increase, higher increase of e-commerce usage in general, I think travel took the benefit as well. And today the market has shifted completely uh, into into online. I think it's flipped around. So it's 60, 40 now online to offline and subject to increase this year. Um, more more usage, more trips, shorter trips um, uh, that we see nowadays compared to, to before. Uh, more solo trips than, than before. Previously, this region was very well known as a, as a family travel, big groups travel habits um, that's still there but since COVID we're seeing more and more of uh, of solos uh, and couples uh, traveling business travel is back uh, at, at its peak um, lots of user behavior being more um, more towards personalized demands at the moment uh, every every user is kind of looking for the super um, a super tech enabled sort of uh, features that they would expect from uh, from a travel application like ourselves or any of the others uh, operating in the market. Um, tremendous change on the payment landscape. A uh, few years ago, the buy now, pay later didn't exist. Today, is a, it's a big component. Uh, almost 20% of the travel purchase happening on buy now, pay, pay, pay later. Um, Lots of offering across the market. Lots of local payment schemes have been have been introduced. Lots of loyalty programs have been, um, you know, put in in practice. So I think it's getting into some sort of uh, uh, a maturity within within the within the travel marketplace generally. So there's obviously there's, there's been a lot of changes. Um, just some things you mentioned there. Uh, to so obviously it's changed as you said from family travel, a lot more solo shorter trips. When you look at that kind of data, how would you then use it in terms of offering other services, other products, this kind of thing to, to boost your revenue? How would you look at this data and, and kind of maximize it for yourselves? So we got generally serves around 65 million uh, uh, users who downloaded our app in this part of the world. Um, we have around 10 million active users monthly, so lots of data to consume basically and lots of data to understand, digest. Um, we see all kinds of behaviors, we see the top destinations, we work with lots of tourism offices as well to to help them uh, you know, on a co-marketing basis 
uh, educating the the consumers about the destinations and uh, try to get them to transact and 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 um, you know to travel to that destination. Um, so lots and lots of data touch points that we we create uh, and we understand. Travel has been known as a very seasonal uh, pattern generally. That's also changing. Um, the seasonal travel here um, get affected pretty much every couple of years because the shift of Ramadan season, which is, you know, going backward uh, by by ten to fifteen days every 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 year. So you've got a month every year that went where things changed, school holidays changed, um, uh, and the whole pattern changed basically. Uh, yes, we see shorter trips and more solos, but we see more frequency. Um, there are lots and lots of uh, low-cost carriers offering in the market now compared to before. So tickets are more uh, accessible, I would say. Um, so we have more more product to offer at the moment. Um, what we try to do is basically we create products and experiences and we enable our, our, our product and front end to provide users with as close as they would desire. Uh, in terms of search results for their for their trips, be it on you know flights or 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 hotels, um, we try to cross sell flights to hotels, obviously, um, and we we try to provide extra services. So usually, you know, we like to think of how we get people to the destination. So pre-trip, we help them with that, but also we're we're more focusing on what we can offer them during the trip. Uh, and potentially post the trip, especially around reviews and getting to understand how it's been going and you know what what can we do better. Uh, we invested a lot on our customer service. We've got like um, around hundred uh, hundred people in in Cairo, um, providing twenty four seven customer service. Um, many of those are actually whether trying to help them with you know connecting them with the partner they booked with, or uh, helping them with the, with the bookings happening with us. At the same time, we we play a role in helping them throughout the itinerary generation uh, altogether. I, I guess for you, you're trying to make the whole process as seamless as possible. How are you tapping into some of the new technologies? Obviously, AI has been huge the last year. Is this something you've been utilizing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, for us, we, we look at it from different angles, right? Uh, one of them is you know, how we can get our stuff using it because we think that's going to be crazy not to utilize that. So lots of uh, lots of the work that uh, our team is doing now is pretty much utilizing all the AI tools, the chat GPT, extra, extra. But the more important part is actually, there are lots of uh, applications um, uh, that's been developed already, and we're 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 figuring out ways to consider it and ways to build, um, you know, products on top of that. We're we're encouraging our tech team to use it for coding, which is tremendously time saving and you know uh, uh, much more faster in terms of implementation, building stuff, rolling rolling it out. So. I think once we once we start building and enable um, ourselves to to build the, the the products on top of the you know uh, foundation that's been set already, uh, I think personalization in terms of offering should be should be taken to a second level, and that's what we desire to complete by by this year. Now, there's another thing that I've often noticed myself when using travel apps is that when I have a good experience, I tends to go back and use that same travel app again and again. Is is loyalty a big thing for you? And if it is, what is it that you do to, to kind of to make sure that customers keep coming back to use your travel app or your your marketplace and not someone else? Sure. So so for us as a as a meta search or marketplace, um, usually consumers love using products like ourselves because they basically have a full vision on the entire marketplace. So they see all the offerings in the market in in one platform. Uh, <coughs> sorry, that's that's kind of a, kind of a, you know a, a great proposition in front of consumers. Consumers love it and they come back again. Um, but what we try to do is basically to utilize data as much as we can and try to narrow down the search 
in all possible ways. We apply lots of filters within the product. You can really tailor make the trip the way you want. You know, we, we, we give you options to choose a specific airline, specific uh, departure time, specific landing time. Uh, we give you multi-destination option. We give you lots of, uh, you know, pr pr preferred payment option. Uh, you can choose before even you run the search, what sort of cards you have, uh, what sort of payment options you have. So that all gives you a fantastic user experience that will make it, you know, straight to, to you know, uh, to your trip. So basically the fantastic seamless experience altogether. Um, I think that counts around 50, 60 percent of reasons for for users to come back. We invest a lot on the brand, obviously. So we, we, we like people to recognize and think of us as the first uh, first option when they wanna when they wanna book their travel. Um, on top of that, we're we're putting lots of efforts now and lots of engineering into creating um, a user profile uh, with all the AI enabled um, uh, technology that will basically uh, create a much more sec like higher level of of uh, of personalization within uh, with, within the product. Um, are we into the points system or some sort of that? No, again, we're, we're, we're a marketplace. We would like to be agnostic towards towards everyone. But I think with all, within our own product, um, there are lots of uh, ideas about um, creating uh, connection directly with those who buy from our own product. We launched during COVID a product called ShopCash, which is a cashback rewards platform. Um, Consumers usually use it and love to use it for their routine purchases, be it, you know, buying e-commerce from Amazon, Noon, Extra, where they get cash back uh, into their into their wallet. Um, definitely, WeGo's offers are there as well. So, you know, people come to shop cash, purchase from WeGo, and earn some cash back on that. And we're, we're trying to um, foster and, um, you know, put more efforts into growing that um, uh, user base and educate the market more about it. Do you think, does this give you a good base to potentially expand into other services beyond travel? Um, obviously, <laughs> these days I'm hearing a lot of super apps, a lot about this, and um, I guess it's become very popular that one app will try and do multiple things. Is this something you're thinking about? Sure. I mean, for, for us, um, yeah, we, we we are considering and we think of ourselves as a super app, but dedicated to travel at the same time. We don't want to go into every sector, you know, and add products that not necessarily within the travel scope. But uh, we tried in some markets um, to add some other services besides flights and hotels. And uh, there are lots of promising uh, outcome from those. We're in the process now to add some more. So. But all within the travel, we want to we want to add. Uh, you know, we already have an insurance product in place. Uh, we want to add more insurance providers in there. Uh, we want to add uh, car hire. We want to add uh, airport transfers. We want to add activities. Uh, again, as I said earlier, you know, so we're, we're very we're very good and famous for the pre-trip, but we want to get more into the in-trip, basically, sort of uh, uh, offerings, and that's where. Uh, we think our our product is going to evolve in the future. Yeah, yeah. Finally, I just want to touch then on, you mentioned payments. It, it's something we cover quite a lot at, at Seamless Extra. Buy now, pay later. In terms of the data, who's actually using this? Is it more of a kind of a younger demographic or what's the data telling you on this? Well, actually, it's interesting to to to, to see that it's pretty much across the board. Um, but for travel specifically, we see it more for the families and groups, um, which is a sizable uh, business from this part of the world. Um, whenever the tickets or the tickets basically are exceeding the ten thousand dirhams or real sort of mark, uh, we start we start seeing more demand on the buy now pay later, and that's quite frequent. And people find it amazing because they can they can plan their trips ahead and they can you know uh, split the payment across you know three four uh, months and more do more trips basically so it is very very promising um, I would say uh, users love it um, we like it I think we have 
two big providers in the region that managed to scale uh, and more to come, I see. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.